Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the embryology and the anatomy of the kidney. Today, let's turn our attention to some physiology, aka how these 1 million nephrons per kidney actually work. So let's get started. But before we get started, here's the basic idea. Blood gets filtered because your urine basically comes from blood. All right, blood is filtered. If you find good stuff, reabsorb it back to the blood. If you find bad stuff, secreted and excreted into the urine. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Blood comes to the kidney via the renal artery. This blood gets filtered here in the glomerular capillary tuft, which lies inside the Bowman's capsule, as we have discussed before. Now we have a filtrate in the tubules. All right, good stuff, reabsorb it back to the blood. Bad stuff secreted into the urine. Let's talk about the urine, right? Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, collecting tubules, collecting ducts, minor calices, major calices, renal pelvis, the pyologue, and then the ureters, urinary bladder, urethra, boom, to the toilet or toilette. This joke is getting old. Functions of the kidney, regulation, excretion, secretion, and gluconeogenesis. Regulation of the water and electrolytes in your body, of your arterial blood pressure, because if the kidney reabsorbs salt, and of course, as you know, chloride follows sodium, and water follows sodium chloride, when I reabsorb more salt and water, I will raise my blood pressure. If I reabsorb less sodium chloride, I will lower my blood pressure. This is not the only mechanism, it's just one of the mechanisms. Acid-base balance. How? If the kidney reabsorbs more hydrogen, you get more acidotic. If the kidney secretes more hydrogen, you get more alkalotic. Conversely, reabsorb more bicarbonate and you get alkalotic. Reabsorb less bicarbonate and you become more acidotic or acidemic. Excretion of what? Of the metabolic waste and foreign chemicals. Get rid of the bad stuff. And then the kidney can secrete. You can think of your kidney as a bunch of glands. Some of them are paracrine. Some of them are endocrine. So believe it or not, your kidney is an endocrine organ too. What's the difference between paracrine and endocrine? We've talked about this before. When you secrete something to the local tissue, nearby surroundings, this is paracrine through the interstitial fluid. But if you secrete your hormones to the blood, which will take you to distant organs all over the body, this is endocrine land. Give me example of paracrine functions of the kidney. It secretes prostaglandin and bradykinin. Prostaglandin has many functions, including dilating vessels. It is pro-fever and sometimes can cause pain. Bradykinin dilates blood vessels. And then the endocrine functions. Erythropoietin boosts the synthesis of red blood cells from the bone marrow. Renin boosts the conversion of angiotensinogen from the liver to angiotensin 1 which will later become angiotensin 2, which will increase release of aldosterone, which will reabsorb salt and water and raise your blood pressure. It will also dump potassium and hydrogen. Dump the potassium in the urine, I get hypokalemia. Dump the hydrogen and I'll get alkalosis. Next, the kidney can secrete the active form of vitamin D, also known as vitamin D3 or the 1 and 25, since these are two, Dye. Two of what? Hydroxyl group. I have hydroxyl at carbon number one, another one at carbon number 25. Dye hydroxy, cholecalciferol. And the kidney has a function in biochemistry in gluconeogenesis. Very important, which is basically making glucose from new sources. What do you mean by new sources? Non-carbohydrate sources. Oh, like from proteins? Yeah. Like from fat? Yeah but not all fats, some of them. The distinction among autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine was discussed before. Punctuation is important. Like, look at the difference between these two. Of course, the second sentence is, is, is the correct one. Similarly, punctuation is important. A kidney without blood pressure is absolutely nothing. Or, as a friend of mine used to say, no BP, no PP. 
If you do not have an adequate blood pressure, you will not be able to perfuse your kidney and you will not be able to make any urine. No BP, no PP. And that's why one of the common causes of oliguria or anuria is hypotension, pre-renal azotemia. To understand the profundity of no BP equals no PP, consider this. Imagine that I was crossing the street, got hit by a car, lost a lot of blood. Blood loss will decrease my blood volume. No kidding. This is called hypovolemia or extra or extra cellular fluid volume depletion. Every organ in my body is gonna suffer from the loss of blood, especially the kidney, because the kidney without blood pressure is crude. No BP, no PP. Why? Because the kidney is dependent on an adequate mean arterial blood pressure in order for the kidney to give you a constant glomerular filtration rate. If you have a low glomerular filtration rate, you know what we call you? kidney failure patient. An adequate blood pressure is paramount and imperative for the kidney's function. Low blood pressure is bad for the kidney, you get acute kidney failure. High blood pressure is also bad for the kidney, you can get chronic kidney failure. And there is a chicken or the egg kind of a story. Kidney disease can cause hypertension and Hypertension can cause kidney disease, and it's very hard to know which one started first, unless you get a good history from the patient. Supposing that the patient is actually paying attention and can recall which one happens first. When the kidney raises my blood pressure, we call this renovascular hypertension, which is hypertension caused by a vessel disease in the kidney. But when a high blood pressure screws up the kidney, this is called hypertensive nephropathy. Kidney pathology caused by high blood pressure. And that's why it's very important to regulate the extracellular fluid volume. Remember me when I had a car accident, when I lost blood, what happened to my extracellular fluid volume? It decreased. How does the body regulate the extracellular fluid volume? Many, many mechanisms, including the famous kidney. When the blood pressure drops, the kidney will respond. When the blood pressure increases, the kidney will also respond because the kidney cares about her own self-interest, like the selfish person that she is. Just joking. How do the kidney respond to hypotension? By increasing the reabsorption of sodium and water to raise the blood pressure back to normal. How do the kidney respond to the hypertension? by decreasing the reabsorption of salt and water, i.e. by increasing the excretion of salt and water to decrease the blood pressure back to normal. Homeostasis, baby. Next, let's turn our attention to the endocrine function of the kidney. If I suffer from anemia, you know the kidney will do what? Secrete more of the erythropoietin to stimulate the bone marrow more, to secrete more red blood cells to try to treat the anemia and back to normal. Homeostasis, baby. This is a good kidney. Conversely, let me give you a diseased kidney. This kidney has a pathology, does not secrete any EPO, therefore I'm not making lots of red blood cells and I get anemia. Tired and pale, pale and tired. Sometimes I have angina, sometimes I can get a murmur. Moreover, there is shortage of breath, dizziness, exercise intolerance, etc. And this is the most important slide in the entire stinking video. Renin is released by the kidney. It's one of the endocrine functions. Under sympathetic nervous system stimulation via the beta-1 adrenergic receptor. Renin is released from the kidney, which is going to convert angiotensin OGEN from the liver into angiotensin 1. Alright, OGEN. Why do you call it OGEN? Because it will cause genesis to angiotensin. Oh, angiotensin OGEN will cause genesis to angiotensin. Here's angiotensin 1. Thanks to angiotensin converting enzyme found in your lungs, it's going to be converted to angiotensin 2, which has two main functions. Function number 1 is to vasoconstrict your arterioles. Function number 2 is to boost the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex's zona glomerulosa. Aldosterone will reabsorb two things and secrete two things. Reabsorbs salt and water, secretes potassium and hydrogen. 
When you increase reabsorption of salt and water, this will raise my blood pressure. When you dump potassium in the urine, I get hypokalemia. Dump the hydrogen ions, I get metabolic alkalosis. This is some good clean physiology right here. You want to take it to the next level? Let's take it to the next level. Hypotension triggers the kidney to release renin because hypotension is a dangerous situation. Triggers the baroreceptors in your carotid and in your aorta. The response to this dangerous situation is to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, beta-1 stimulation, renin time. Angiotensinogen will become angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 1 will become angiotensin 2. Well, the name has the function here. The name has the answer for you. Angio vessel, tensin. Tense the vessel. Yeah, cause vasoconstrictions of the arterioles, which will raise the total peripheral resistance and raise the blood pressure. Moreover, I will increase aldosterone release, which will reabsorb salt and water and raise the blood pressure back to normal. It will also make me thirsty and secrete ADH, which reabsorbs free water to increase my blood pressure and back to normal. You see this angiotensin converting enzyme? Oh, I see it, medicosis. It's the enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Yes, but it has another function. It actually inhibits the conversion of high molecular weight kinase into bradykinin. Even if you succeeded to make some bradykinin, ACE will take that bradykinin to the cleaners by converting it into inactive metabolites, pieces of trash basically. So in summary, ACE is anti-bradykinin. What do you think is going to happen to people who are taking a medication known as ACE inhibitor? Oh, I will inhibit the ACE. Therefore, I will not be anti-bradykinin anymore. In fact, I'll have more bradykinin in my body. What does bradykinin do? Vasodilation, bronchoconstriction. Oh, that's why patients who take ACE inhibitors suffer from dry cough and angioedema that's exactly right see medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about this was just a biology discussion if you want more kidney tricks check out my renal physiology course on my website medicosisperfectsnellis.com if you want renal pharmacology or diuretics i have them in my cardiac pharmacology course and i have a third video on the acid base imbalances the best in the world. I mean 30 videos just on the acid-base disturbances in the human body. Who does that? Most of your professors don't even know what base deficit means, let alone make a clinical interpretation from it. But not you. Go to medicosisperfectionalist.com. Learning is fun. Or you can try my brand new surgery course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist, where medicine makes perfect sense.